Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're looking into the disappearance of Sally Ann Stone and we're going to go through a couple more as we do hers. She's been missing since 1986 from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. She was 21 years old, 5 foot 1 and 115 pounds. One of her knees was injured when she disappeared at the time of her disappearance. She had brown hair and hazel eyes. Uh, she has a 5 to 6 inch scar on her ab abdomen, possibly the result of a c-section, a tattoo. She has some tattoos and it mentions them there. She was last seen leaving her physical therapist's office in her hometown. She was getting treatment for an injured knee. She had another appointment, but she missed it. Her husband was in jail at the time. He reported her missing after she did not visit him over Memorial Day weekend in 1986. There was no sign of a struggle at her residence on Elm Street. Her Chevy Nova was parked outside her home with a bag of stale donuts inside. I'm betting that the day she went to buy the donuts was when she went missing, right? Her purse was gone, but her suitcases and clothing were in the closet. There was a new pair of shoes on the bed, newspapers, and had accumulated on her front porch and in the mailbox was an insurance check and a letter from her mother. They suspect she was taken against her will and she's never been heard from again, but yeah, I'm guessing it was probably about the time she went to get the donuts. And then they have other ones that they think might be connected, and this one... Okay, so this one's 1986. And this one's 1986. So this one, Coeur Idaho, 31 years old, 5'4", 130 pounds. Blonde hair, green eyes, nicknamed Debbie. She was a special ed teacher. She was last seen near the entrance of Tubbs Hill Trail at 4.40 p.m. They believe she was going there to go jogging. Her vehicle was found locked and abandoned in the 3rd Street parking lot near Tubbs Hill later that day, a Kmart shopping bag was in the trunk and her purse was inside the car, but there was no sign of her. And the car keys were missing, have never been found. She missed appointments over the following two days and was reported missing April 1st. She's never been heard from again. They believe she was taken against her will. Other women have been attacked on the trail where she was last seen, but the attacks have not been linked to her disappearance. That's strange. And then this girl, 1987. So we have... March 86. May 86. And the, this one's not mentioned until 87. I don't know. Five foot two, hundred pounds, brown hair, brown eyes, scar on her back. She has a metal rod implanted in her spine. She was last seen in Spokane. Oh, she was last seen in Spokane, Washington. I might have seen a different one that I didn't check. So, anyway, she was last seen in Spokane County, Washington, 1987. She worked for the Power Administration. She um, went to energize and de-energize power equipment, reading meters, keeping transformers powered up. She was last seen at work. She signed into the substation, it said at 2.30, and it was later found locked. She apparently disappeared around 3.30 from the substation near where Four Mound and Collie Height Road meets, northwest of Spokane. Her hard hat, her toolbox, her water bottle, and her sunglasses were found lying on the ground next to her truck. Her purse was still inside the vehicle, and the driver's side door and back hatch were open. There were indications of a struggle, including drag marks on the ground, and a fresh set of tire tracks, not from her truck, were found nearby. They say that it looks as if she had been overpowered by two people. Her husband was at work at the time of her disappearance and is not considered a suspect. So, and they don't know what happened. 
but they think that these three are all related because Anyway, so then I was looking at Jane Doe's, trying to figure out who they could be. And there's this one, but this one didn't die till 1990. And they discovered this person in 1991. So this is a few years later, so I don't know how that could be. But 5'1 to 5'4, 20 to 45 years old. Um... They were discovered in British Columbia. Um, this one is Canada, 1995, February of 1995. See, this is like 10 years later. 20 to 40 years old, a white female. Partial skull on a farm. This one is 1996. Not sure of the date of death. 20 to 34 years old. I, I might look through some more Jane Doe's. But, I, you know, you look at the area. And I don't, like Spokane, Washington. We'll type that in so you can see. And open up for me. I'm still here. It's just my tabs are like... I don't know. So two... So we'll do cam loops because that's the one that came up automatically. It's a six hour drive. Which one was Kamloops? Okay, and then I'll do this one. Let me zoom in. But yeah, you can see there. And then we'll do this other one. And that's mission. And this is the other one. There's there's a bunch there's a lot of chain does it could be though if you go through them all there's a lot of them and I have to check the back but this is a lot of years later so I don't know you know I I really just was going through and looking you know and then there's Frozen in time, I am, I am. There's this Jane Doe. And she didn't die until 1991 too, so that was years later. But her hairline, I think, reminded me a bit of hers. At the top, the way it curves in like that. So I don't know. Severe scoliosis, high cheekbones, and her hairline looked like hers. And didn't it say something about I don't know, something about a plate in her back or something? I thought I read something about a metal plate in her back. Metal rod implanted in her spine. That's interesting, isn't it? Washington. See, 
high cheekbones, severe scoliosis. I don't know if that would have anything to do with a metal rod in her spine. But it's years after, so I don't know. And then we have this one, and I don't know why I put this on here yet, and I gotta wait for it to load. And this is Washington, too. She died 1986 to 1997, 30 to 50 years old, estimated 5'5". Five five. They don't know her hair color. If it's brown or blonde, so this one had scoliosis too, right? That's strange. I don't because Washington just seems like it's near that area and I don't know if she looks like she could be one of them or not. But five foot five estimated. She's five foot four. I don't know. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of Jane Doe's listed. There's a lot of them. And then you got to go through them and try to find out if they're close to the area and if they're the right height and the right year. And there's so many of them, I might go through them again later. But it just makes me feel so sad. You know, you read about them disappearing, you read about the time they disappear, and then you try to think, well, you know, if somebody was going to kill them, where would they take them to? And it seems like, you know, I don't know, would they. You, you just don't know what somebody's thinking like. You don't know if they would take them across the county line or if they would take them to a cabin or somewhere. You know, you just don't know. You just don't know because it depends on what they have access to. And I don't know. It's just heartbreaking. It, it, just thinking about it, it just makes you so upset. It's just so upsetting just thinking about it. But then we have these three girls that nobody knows what happens to them. And if you have any information, there's phone numbers. Whether you, if you're not even sure if it's relevant, give them a call. Let them know. Let them decide if it's relevant or not. You know? Because it's, it's. It's really sad that these cases are still open and nobody knows what happened to them, you know. I don't I don't even know if they're related or not. I think they think they're related, but you know, you don't know. Sometimes people disappear close to each other in the same areas and you think they might be related and they're not. Sometimes they're taken by different people, which is really sad because you think about you know, more than one person doing that to people, but she reminds me of that photo of that girl that's supposed to be 15 or 16 years old with a duct tape in her mouth. I think the photo was found in Florida. She's in the back of a van. Uh, she looks just, she, she looks so much like her. There's a girl and a, a boy, there's a teenage girl and a young boy in the back of the van, and the girl's got duct tape on her mouth, and I think they found it in Florida. And that's who she looks like to me. You remember that? I don't know if you remember that, but... But the girl's only 15, 16. But... She looks so much like her. Doesn't she? I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. But they just found a photo, or not one photo. I think they found several photos somewhere. And that's who she reminds me of. Anyway, please feel free to leave comments. And don't forget to stop to pray for these people and their loved ones and their families. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye.